did NASA fake the moon landing photos? Was this photo really taken in orbit around the moon? Why does expat Taffy refer to himself as brilliant? Join me as we delve into the topic of human space exploration and ask the question, what is NASA hiding? Please subscribe. Hi folks. Welcome to another video by the brilliant expat Taffy. Brilliant! <laughs> Now, what this video is about is one very special photo. Generally speaking, the word brilliant is often used to describe something that stands out as exceptional or outstanding in some way. Brilliant! <laughs> And whilst I agree that you certainly stand out, it most definitely isn't because you're exceptional. In my last video, if you watch that, I leave the link to you in the pre-report. Pre-report? Now I know this may be split in hairs, but doesn't pre-anything mean that it came before something else? So for it to be a pre-anything, let alone a report, we would have needed to see it before you published this video. Can you just for once talk like a normal nutcase? Just tell us that you've left a link to the photo in the video description. You see, I put a test case, a certain photo claimed by NASA and all these nutters to be in, taken in orbit around the moon. Well, I hope the test case doesn't involve you actually going to the moon to verify the photo's authenticity. Actually, that <laughs> wouldn't be such a bad thing. Taff, you do realize that what you do is not research. All you do is look at a photo, show your complete lack of understanding, call it fake, and then laugh like a demented garden gnome. <laughs> here you are, folks. Here's that photo here. That I'm in space, according to NASA, orbiting the moon. And the number of this is AS11-44-56571. According to NASA? No, it isn't according to NASA. It's according to the fact that it's in space. The clues are all there, Taft. So what we are seeing is the Apollo 11 lunar module after separation. At 1.47 p.m. EDT on July 20th, 1969, the lunar module carrying Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin. Wait, his real name's Edwin. <laughs> no wonder he calls himself Buzz, but anyway. Now folks, that photo there, I put that to another NASA nutcase about four to five years ago. His name was Okamite, as you are going to see now. Now according to him at the time, there was nothing wrong with it. It was genuine and taken in space. Correct! I can't see anything wrong with it either. And as I have already said, all the clues are there. I better stop using the word clue though, hadn't I? Otherwise Taft's going to have a thrombo when he sees this video. And yes, he will see it because he watches everything I do. He's a huge fan. And yet the photo's genuine, Taft. Just get on with it. I can't do any more. I've already edited out all your pauses. I can't actually make your videos for you. He used to have a different icon to what he got now. He felt such a stupid fool, he changed his icon. You could just pick a point and get to it. You wouldn't believe how difficult it is to make responding to one of your ridiculous videos entertaining. And I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do, but before I record my videos, I make sure there's nothing going on in the background. You know, tidy up that sofa, will you? Now folks, <clears throat> with me putting that photo up again, just a week or two ago, I managed to force this idiot, Okanite, into giving us a response to it. And let me tell you, his response, his excuse for that photo is bloody hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. And we all know there's nothing hilarious about a pensioner making YouTube videos about the moon landings being faked, is there? <laughs> I won't tell you what he said until I show you the evidence. Evidence? What evidence? I've seen pretty much every video you've ever uploaded, and I haven't seen you show anything apart from how insane you are. There is no evidence that any of NASA's photos are fake. It's just conspiracy nut jobs like you that think they are. But for every claim people like you make, there is always, always a really simple explanation. Then you can appreciate what he said. <laughs> now folks, another NASA idiot I challenged with that photo in my last video is Cleric58. No matter how many times I've asked him, 
Join me on Zoom or Skype and we'll discuss the photos. Hmm. Do you mean like that time you challenged me to speak to you on Zoom and didn't turn up? Or like that time I returned the favour and did a two hour live stream that I sent you an invite to asking you to join me live in front of my audience so we could have a chat about NASA and you didn't turn up? Or does Zoom have a different meaning in Thailand? Half, I have no idea why you keep throwing these challenges out if you have no intention of ever following through. And what I mean by following through is actually turning up to one of these calls, not the other type of follow through, which I'm sure a man of your age does a lot. He said we don't need Skype, we can do them on comments. But you ask him now, any of you go on to uh, Shell Stompers <clears throat> video, talk to Cleric and ask him, when is he going to comment on this photo? Never mind all that, I'm going to comment right now. He will not comment. He won't address the situation on Zoom or Skype and he won't address the situation on comment. That proves the man is an idiot and a liar. No, it doesn't. It proves that he's had enough of you. And I can't say I blame him. Now, I know you like to refer to yourself as brilliant, but you're nothing more than an old man who has got way too much time on his hands. And I'm all for the retired having hobbies, but come on, what's wrong with knitting or dominoes? We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hi, it's me, Editing Creaky. So, there's been a development. I did comment on his video, as you just saw, and he only went and replied. So my comment was, well, 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 if it isn't the brilliant expat Taffy, what's wrong with that photo? Looks great to me anyway. I would love to stay in chat, but I'm busy making a response to your video. Love you, bye. To which he then replied, look at what we have here, Bertie Slack and Paul Patton's nursemaid, the stupid Welsh idiot that the brilliant expat Taffy has been waiting for for two years to grow some balls and face me man to man on Zoom or Skype. Sounds fair to me. So I replied, I can do a call right now if you like, what's your email and I'll send you a link so we can have a civil discussion right now. And he only went and replied again? Ha ha ha! Because <laughs> that's what expat Taffy laughs like. Trying it on again, Creaky. I am the host. William Smithin is inviting you to a scheduled Zoom meeting, blah blah blah. So I joined the Zoom call. And then this happened. Not sure where I'm going to fit this into the video, but this is very exciting. Expat Taffy has actually sent me a link to a Zoom call. So I'm going to click on it now and see what happens. Come on, Taff, I've been sat here 10 minutes now. I haven't got all day. 20 minutes. Something tells me he's not going to come. <laughs> yeah, half an hour. I'm not waiting any longer. Clearly, expat Taffy isn't quite as brave as he likes to make out in his videos. So yeah, I basically wasted half an hour of my life that I'm never getting back because I foolishly thought that this turkey was actually going to come on and talk to me. How wrong was I? Anyway, back to the video. Here comes that photo again. Take a look at it. And let me tell you, the brilliant expat Taffy can spot around 10 anomalies in this photo that proves it was not taken in orbit around the moon. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot we were looking at photos. You're so long-winded, I'd pretty much forgotten what we were doing here. Okay, folks. Here's that photo. Uh, any of you spot anything strange about it? It's upside down? The first thing I notice is it's upside down. Well done, Taff. I spotted that too. It's no wonder you call yourself brilliant. Now, why is it upside down? Well, that's NASA showing complete disrespect for all their viewers because they think, oh, if you see it upside down, that means it's in low gravity or the astronauts would fall out of their suit. Insulting your intelligence. That's the first thing. That image was taken by Neil Armstrong from inside the lunar module after he and Buzz Aldrin had completed their moonwalk and were preparing to lift off from the lunar surface to rendezvous with Michael Collins in the command module. The reason the image appears upside down is that the camera was mounted upside down on the lunar module's window. And remember the window part, it's important later on. And Armstrong had to hold it upside down to take pictures of the ascent stage as it approached the command module, because it allowed him to capture the best possible view of the approaching spacecraft. Now, the next thing to notice, <clears throat> as I show it there, it's been photoshopped. And what you're going to see is proof that that idiot Dave McKeegan is a liar or a stupid idiot because he claims every photo should be photoshopped. And just remember this was supposed to be 1969 and the first shot photo that's got photoshopped was 
19, uh, sorry, 2009. What about all the people who saw this image before 2009 then? Are you gonna show us what it looked like before Photoshop did its magic? Probably not. And to be honest, I would be more inclined to trust Dave, what with him being a professional photographer and all. And I know exactly what Dave means. Photoshop is used on a lot of images. I Photoshop pretty much every picture I take to clean up the image and make it look as good as possible. The problem is, because Photoshop does have the ability to add things to a photo, you lot have come to the misguided conclusion that it's used to fake things, like the Apollo photos. No, folks. For my next piece of evidence. Next piece? All you've done is shown us a picture, and I can't be the only one who finds it hysterical that you're using a photo taken in the moon's orbit to try and show that we didn't land on the moon. I'm going to show you something that's impossible in space. Are you going to show us a picture of somebody walking on the moon in shorts and flip-flops? What we're going to do is take a look at a boxing match. At the moment, a match between Roy Jones and Anthony Tarver. Take a look at this photo. There you are, folks. <clears throat> look at this photo here. This is reality. Now look what you've got here. Look at all them lights casting beams. Four beams per light. Straight light beam. Well, that's awesome, Taff. But I'm not sure what you hope to gain by showing us a screen graphic for a boxing match, which is a composition of multiple photos. Or does boxing prove that we didn't land on the moon? I mean, it would be just as good as any other reason we've heard for why we didn't land on the moon. That is because it's taken here on the Earth in an atmosphere. Are you serious? Please don't tell me you think this is a single shot photo. You cannot get light beams showing up in the emptiness, the vacuum of space. Ah, right, so that's why you showed us that picture. Well, let's explore that then, shall we? So the beams we can see aren't because the picture was being taken through a window. It is possible that the light beams you are referring to are actually lens flares or reflections caused by the camera equipment used during the mission. Now, folks, study this photo carefully, <clears throat> and what you can see is some light beams coming from different parts of this lem. I'll brighten it up and give you a better look at those light beams. They are impossible in space. Now, it's funny to me that Taff seems to think that brightening an image up is all it takes to prove it's fake. It does nothing apart from distort the image. It completely baffles me when you do it because it has no value at all. There you are, folks. I brighten it up and you can see them light beams. Now, they are impossible in space. But we could see the light beams anyway. And as I just said, and this is just me thinking out loud, the picture was taken from inside the spacecraft. So do me a little favour, Taff. When it gets dark outside, take your phone out or your camera, whatever you prefer, and take a picture of something which is lit up through one of the windows in your house and see how you get on. See if you can get a picture of something with light on it without any light beams or as people who aren't totally nuts call them, lens flares. Now, folks, the next thing to notice about Photoshop, as I've shown that idiot Dave McKeegan, there's only three times photos need to be Photoshopped. One, to suddenly correct errors that they missed before, that shows the photo is fake. Two, to create a new photo from scratch at the day it was Photoshopped. And three, to deliberately insert hidden whistleblowers clues to tell us that they fake the, fake the photo. So they do it on purpose, especially for conspiracy theorists like you. Okay, why then? Who are you and why is what you say gonna mean anything to NASA? No, folks, it cannot be number one because what you're going to see, the errors are still there. Oh, those NASA people are crafty. And remember, Taff, this is your claim, not mine. So they fake photos to make us think we landed on the moon. They then heavily Photoshop those already faked photographs to hide the fact from everyone except NASA whistleblowers like you. Yeah, I bet he's blown a few whistles while he's been living in Thailand, hasn't he? Now you know what it feels like. And... Even after all that, they still show the errors. Doesn't sound quite as believable when someone else says it, does it? And number two, it may not be that, but number three, it's definitely inserted whistleblower's clues. Inserted. <laughs> now, I brighten it up, one full set in there, for you to see the light beat. Just remember, they are impossible in space. But question again though, Taff, because I know you'll watch this, during your many, many hours of research into this particular photo, 
Did you not notice that the guy holding the camera was actually indoors taking the picture through a window? So while it may well be impossible for light beams to show themselves in the vacuum of space, the camera isn't actually in the vacuum of space, is it? Now folks, the next thing I'm going to show you that this lem in space is fake is there are two windows, triangular windows at the top of this lem and they're both in darkness. There is no light on inside that lem. Did he just say there is no light on the inside of the lem? <laughs> the irony. It's no wonder you love this photo so much. The inside of the lunar module is probably very dim. <laughs> okay, folks. Now comes the real evidence that shows what a stupid idiot Okamite is. Take a look at the next bit of evidence of fakery coming up here, and let's see if any of you can give an explanation for it. There you are, folks. I've brightened up again and taken a cropping of that photo. Are you being serious? <laughs> Although at least I now know why your video is titled Human Hand in Space. So not only are you the world's premier NASA whistleblower, but you're a Paradolia fan as well. I'm going to have to introduce Taft to Roger from Mud Fossil University. They'd get on like a house on fire. Roger also thinks he's brilliant. In fact, he once said in one of his own videos, he can't be peer reviewed because he has no peers. I bet you wish you were that brilliant, don't you Taft? And look what you've got outside the lem. There is some object there. What do you think it is? To me, I can see one, two, three, four fingers. I can see a thumb and I can see an object being held between the thumb and the four fingers. Right, so in 1969, which is when this photo was taken, it was taken using technology which was still about 30 years away from being a reality. Now I'm all for using your imagination. It's fun when you're six years old. But seriously, come on, are you honestly claiming that this picture was taken with a smartphone in 1969 just to fool people? Okay folks, take a look at this. It's a mobile phone. Take a look at this, it's a human hand. Now I can grab it there and look what I've got. Can you see it? I've got four fingers below, I've got my thumb at the top and I've got an object in the middle. Who the hell holds their phone like that? How the hell would they take a picture? Or are you not claiming that the picture was taken with a smartphone? Your claim is that someone who is clearly a weirdo if they hold their phone like that allowed themselves to be seen in this picture as a way of sending out a clue that we actually didn't land on the moon. Have a word with yourself, will you? Have you ever actually watched any of your own videos? Now that's the nearest I can get to what that object is. Now, if you look at the comment by that idiot, Ockerman, what he says is, it's God outside the lem sticking two fingers up at Apollo deniers. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. Although I have no idea why you were laughing. He was making fun of you. See what I mean now when I say Apollo believers are lunatics? <laughs> Sorry, who are the lunatics? I thought for a second you said that people who can actually accept the fact that we did land on the moon and that it was and still is one of man's greatest achievements are lunatic. I must be getting deaf in my old age. Now folks, that object or images outside the lem, what is it? As I told you, it could be a deliberately inserted clue by whistleblowers, or it could be an error. Now, initially, I thought it may be a deliberate whistleblower's clue, but I've now come up with something that may have a better explanation. That is it. Just some sort of artifact left behind as part of the photo. As far as that image is concerned, in the previous photo, a human hand holding a mobile phone, how do you think it got there? I don't really know, but my best guess, and it is just a guess, but my best guess would be that it didn't. Sorry Taff, it's all in your head pal, and I mean why wouldn't it be? There must be so much room in there. <laughs> the only thing I can think of now is the photo was taken in a studio and somewhere, maybe on a wall or somewhere, there was a mirror, and from the angle they took the photo, there must have been a flash of the mirror into the camera. So there we go. It would seem that expat Taffy's rabbit hole is far deeper than most. Huge thanks to Dwayne Young for hitting the super thanks button on the last video. And don't forget, if you can support what I do here on YouTube, then check out some of the links I've listed below. This Patreon, my Amazon wishlist, PayPal, they're all down there. Or don't, it's up to you really. But at the very least, I would appreciate a like because that's how YouTube knows that you enjoyed this video and that they should show it to other people. Take care everyone and I will see you in the next video. Love you, bye. Alright, alright, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.